Should you believe in miracles? Here's someone who claims that we should from an Islamic point of view. But will he entirely fail to back up any of his claims, simply relying on emotion and wishful thinking and empty claims to make his point? Of course he will. What else do the religious have? We get back to epistemix because it kind of occurred to me that in my last video, he really didn't talk a lot about Islam, and I wanted to give him that opportunity. So here we go again, this time defending the idea that people should believe in miracles because it says so in the Quran. And no, he's not going to be remotely successful because he's going to do exactly the same thing as every other apologist does, and that's pretend that what they believe is true without being able to demonstrate that it is. And that's just typical theist nonsense. So let's go watch this guy and Islam fail miserably. It's kind of what they do. So I just want to make a quick video addressing a claim against the Quran, which is that the miracles that we find in the Qur'an that Allah speaks about didn't really happen. That's because you have no independent, objectively verifiable evidence that they did. It's the same thing we say about the Bible and every other religious book out there. Just because it makes a claim in your silly book of mythology, that doesn't mean the claim is true. You have to be able to prove it with objective evidence. Get to work. Miracles don't exist. These are just stories or these are just metaphors speaking about something else. It really fascinates me that today in the 21st century, over 1400 years later, we some of us find the need to reinterpret these very clear verses in the Quran. Why do people do this? Because there's no reason to think that they're real. It doesn't matter how good it might make you feel to think that these things are true. You can't produce any reason for the rest of us, the people who don't already buy into your mythology, to take you seriously. And it isn't just today that people have thought these things were absurd. They've been doing it for 1400 years. It's just that you people have been murdering anyone who doesn't go along with your ridiculous faith. Think about that for a minute. And I believe there's two main reasons. Number one, it's because we don't know who Allah is. And number two is because we succumb to certain pressures and certain ideologies that are out there. And here's my response to your two reasons. First, you have no evidence at all that Allah is real. You might really, really, really want Allah to be out there somewhere, but you can't prove it. All we have to go on is your silly book of mythology and your absurd and unsupportable faith. You have to do a lot better than that. And secondly, I think it's bizarre to have you talking about social pressures when Islam, in an unfortunately large portion of the planet, is that social pressure. It murders people. It engages in and encourages honor killings, child marriage, rape gangs, the list goes on and on and on. And then you dare to say that social pressures encourage people not to believe in Islam. No, you want to know why we don't believe in Islam? It's because of Muslims, the same reason that we don't believe in Christianity. Because Christians, not all, but a whole lot of them, are assholes. Maybe you people ought to do something about that. See, if we really understand who Allah is, then we will realize that miracles aren't really a problem. Except there's no way to rationally understand who Allah is because there's no evidence for Allah in the first place. Just because you want to believe it doesn't mean that you should believe it. And that's why the religious fail all the time. They can't help but assume that everything that they believe is true without ever stopping to check and see if it actually is. 
It doesn't matter what makes you feel good. It matters what you can prove. Now, get out there and prove, prove that Allah is real. Go ahead, get back to us when you can. Then, only then, will we talk about miracles. It's actually completely coherent within our worldview to believe in miracles. Why? If we just understand that Allah, God, is all-powerful. He created everything and He has power over all things. For example, Allah says in the Quran, إِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ That He is powerful over all things. He controls everything. Okay, okay, hold up. That's one of the things that just pisses me off about most Islamic videos. The fact that they can't stop from breaking out into random Arabic at the drop of a hat. You're either making these videos for an English-speaking audience or you're not. Pick one, because otherwise you're just driving people away. But, of course, the reason they do it is because they're not talking to us. They're talking to people who already believe and they already know the lingo. But if you're going to talk about people who don't believe you, at least do it in a way that those people can understand. So let's go back and try this again. It's actually completely coherent within our worldview to believe in miracles. Why? If we just understand that Allah, God is all powerful. He created everything and he has power over all things. You can't understand that Allah is all powerful without being able to show that Allah is actually all-powerful. You have to put up, or you can just shut up. You're just making a claim, and an empty claim at that. You don't get to pretend that because your claim is emotionally comforting to you, that everyone else just has to roll over and accept it as gospel truth. It doesn't work that way. Your religion says that Allah is all-powerful. Now, prove that your religion is true. Go ahead. We'll wait. He is in control of them. They are subservient to him and he is not subservient to them. It doesn't matter how many times you repeat the same thing. It doesn't make it so. The religious spend so much time theologically masturbating, demanding that everything in their heads is an accurate representation of reality that nobody, nobody ought to bother actually thinking about it or verifying that it's so, that it makes having any kind of intellectual discussion with the religious a pointless waste of time. And that goes for all religions. Christianity does it. So does Hinduism. So does Scientology. So does Judaism. They're all exactly the same. Once they get these silly notions into their heads, they stop thinking about them. It's just the way that it is, no matter how false it actually is. They don't care, and they're incapable of thinking outside of their self-imposed religious box. And then they spend their time talking about people who don't live in the same kind of mental prison and they expect them to all buy in to the same empty claims that they do. And sorry, that's not going to happen. Therefore, whenever he wills and wishes, he can suspend them. He can allow for miracles to take place. It's not a problem. We could just invent a God, you know, just yank it right out of our butts and make whatever claims we want about that God, and suddenly we're doing the exact same thing he's doing. We're making the same kind of empty assertions that he's making. Even if, for some weird reason, we had absolute blind faith that what we were saying was true, it doesn't make it true any more than all the faith in the world on his part makes what he's spouting true. That's the basis for atheism. I don't believe you. You've given me no reason to take you seriously. You've provided no objectively testable evidence to support your claims. You have to do better. And secondly, it's because we, we succumb to certain views out there. For example, when Richard Dawkins on national TV turns around and says, you believe your prophet flew to heaven on a winged horse. He says it with confidence. And we, we just 
get worried. We freak out. We start to get anxious and, and, and jittery and we think, oh my God, we need to provide him with an answer. And you do. The problem is you don't have an answer. It makes a lot of people nervous and rightfully so. It should make you nervous. He's asking a question that your religion is pointedly ignoring. And when someone points out just how stupid it sounds, you ought to be embarrassed. You ought to realize that, yes, this sounds really, really absurd. And if it sounds that asinine, you really need to ask yourself why you believe it. Why should you accept that this idea is true? That's what religion doesn't want you to ask. Any religion. They don't want you to admit that the beliefs that they preach are really pretty silly to hold. It's why they teach that questioning the faith is heretical. It's why there's an awful lot of Muslim murders. It keeps the doubters in line. Well, all we have to do sometimes is turn the tables. We understand that miracles are completely coherent within our worldview. Turn the tables, ask him and tell him. Yes, we do actually believe our prophet, peace be upon him, went to heaven on a winged horse. And we can believe this because we believe in a creator who is all powerful and is able to do all things. And like it or not, that makes you stupid. It makes you sound like a lunatic. Now, you might not care and that's completely up to you. But you sound no different than the crazy person running around talking about Bigfoot or the Loch Ness Monster. Sure, nobody can stop you from holding ridiculous, unsupportable beliefs. Knock yourself out. But when someone asks you if you really believe that, they're giving you an out. They're holding the door open to you to admit that you're not really as insane as you actually seem to be. You know, the way you actually sound. If you don't want to take that door, that's fine. You know, you be you, I guess. But it doesn't make you look any better, and it doesn't make your religion sound any better. This idea of miracles is completely coherent within our worldview of Islam. Which only goes to prove that your worldview of Islam is idiotic and not based on reality. See, if it was, you could prove the things that you believe are true are actually true. And you can't do that. If it was based on reality, you wouldn't get Muslims going, well, I don't know, that does sound kind of silly. But it does. Because it is. And that doesn't stop the fanatics, does it? Because they've got serious problems. However, let me ask you the question. How do you account for the miracles you claim? Such as the universe coming into existence from nothing or creating itself. How do you make sense of this without God? Those aren't miracles. By definition, miracles are things that violate the laws of nature. None of that violates any natural law. Just because it doesn't make you feel good to accept the truth, doesn't stop it from being the truth. Some of us, some of us, base our positions on the evidence, on the facts, on things that can be objectively and demonstrably shown to be true. Some of us, namely you, don't. And then you get mad at us because we make you look bad. But the problem isn't us. Think about it. Now, obviously, when you're engaging with people, don't get as excited as I am. I'm just trying to get a point across and I'm, and, and, and I'm getting excited in doing that. Speak to people with confidence, but with good characteristics and you know humility and, and carry yourself in the best way possible, right? Sure, whatever you say. Go ahead and claim that you're the all-powerful creator of the universe's best friend. You know, be humble. Pretend you're going to this imaginary paradise that you can't prove exists. Go ahead, I guess. Keep doing what the religious have been doing for centuries, making themselves look like irrational idiots. And when the rest of us dare to point out what a bunch of fools you look like, do what the religious have also done for centuries. React violently. Because yeah, that's not something Islam is known for, right? We need to win hearts and minds, not debates and arguments. See, that's where you go wrong. One of many places. You do need to win debates and arguments. You need to be able to prove that the things in your head 
accurately represent what goes on in reality. I don't care if it makes you feel good. I care if it's demonstrably true. And so far, you're not doing a good job. You spend all of your time appealing to emotion and never, ever to intellect. Your religion historically spreads by the sword. It doesn't spread by the mind. I'm just trying to get a point across that as Muslims we have to have confidence in our tradition, in our understanding of who Allah is and that will give us clarity to other parts of our religion and our way of life. And whenever you are challenged or whenever you find certain ideologies which challenge our way of life, with the best characteristics, clarify things for people, you know, and challenge things as well sometimes and, you know, have honest, fruitful discussions with people because you may actually help them out in the process too. Exactly how do you think you're going to do that? when you have no evidence that any of your beliefs are true. That's exactly why you, like all religions, talk about atheists, but rarely to atheists. Because any atheist worth their salt is just going to point out how stupid the things that you believe actually are. It's why I have my 30 second debate tactic. No religion survives it. They can't, because the core of their beliefs are not defensible. They just not. They never have been and they never will be. So they dodge the question and then try to move the goalposts and I don't let them. Prove your God is real. If you can't, you lose. Faith doesn't work. Claims made in a book of mythology, that doesn't work either. Feelings don't mean a thing. Demonstrable objective evidence for your beliefs or you failed. That means they fail because they just don't have any. It's why every single one of these videos falls apart because they just assume they're right without being able to prove that they're right. The proof is the key, and it's the one thing that no religion has. And without that proof, they all fail. Sad, isn't it? So hopefully this has been beneficial. Assalamu alaikum. Sure, it's been beneficial to show that Islam is just as laughable as Christianity is. But we knew that, didn't we? It's why all religions are terrified of rationality. They have no answers to the hard questions. They don't even try. They refuse to recognize just how badly they fail. Because they don't care about the truth. They're interested in their feelings. Feeling good and getting that dopamine hit in the brain is their only concern, even if they have to believe complete nonsense to get to it. It doesn't matter what religious video I look at. They're all like that, a hundred percent of them. Pick any religious video on YouTube. They're all the same. It doesn't matter what the religion. It doesn't matter what the method. They're all irrational because none of them none of them can defend their core beliefs. They just can't. And they don't care. Pathetic, isn't it? Dick and bum, 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 dick and